Swing Max 3200 comes with a cab monitor that looks exactly like this with a uh, side control and dial. Um, this encoder dial actually bolts to the side of this bracket with two bolts and it can be easily moved um, if you don't like the location of it. So when this is mounted here, if that's kind of somewhere you don't like, you can take that off and move it down to your joystick where your hand normally rests because that is your um, steering and uh, control of the swing max is through this encoder knob. It's also got a, a separate harness so that's, that harness will follow the encoder knob wherever you put it. It has a standard RAM mount so you've got a one inch ball on the monitor. Um, you're going to want to mount this one inch ball on the cab somewhere out of your way of field of vision but somewhere where it's easy to get to this monitor. Um, we've got a nice little bracket made up here and where we like to set this monitor is somewhere right in this location, kind of up out of the way, and then you just tighten that knob down. Um, the other thing to note is the uh, power for this monitor is through an egg connector, so just connect that to one of the outlets in the cab. That's the only power we need to this monitor in the cab. So after we've mounted the cab control into the cab and we've powered it up with the tractor running and the hydraulics engaged the swing max, the first screen that's going to come up is this pop-up asking you to go into auto or manual mode. When this display first powers up, it will power up into road mode and we can get into field mode, but typically you're going to drive to the field, so we want to start in road mode. Um, to engage auto mode, we'll go ahead and press auto. There will be another pop-up asking you if you can steer the axle, if the axle is safe to steer. We're parked in a straight line right now, so I'm, I'm very confident in hitting yes that my axle isn't going to steer. But I always do a visual check and make sure that axle isn't going to steer and hit something. So we're going to hit yes, the axle is going to steer, and we're in full auto mode, in road mode. Um, what that means is when we drive the tractor down the road, the rear axle is going to follow the path of the tractor. Um, so you should be able to drive the swing max like it's a car and not take bends wide. To change to field mode, you select this change mode button. There's pop down here and we select field. When we do that, the first screen that comes up is our offset in distance. Um, that is how far your windrows are spread apart. Right now it's set at 41 feet. 41.1 feet actually. Um, that'd be fairly wide. Um, just for interest sake, let's say we're bailing behind a 20 foot cutter. So we'll set this um, to 21 degrees, which is 19.8 feet of offset. The swing max thinks in degrees. So the top number here is degrees. The bottom number here is feet. In and around 19.8 feet. We're set to 20 feet. We will press set. So now that we've set our offset to 20 feet, um, we'll go over to this encoder knob and we'll see a little red light above the center position button. That means that the swing max is set to follow the tracker and it's in line with the tracker. If we want the swing max to go 20 feet to the right, we'll press this right arrow button. That will automatically show our target distance as 21 feet or 21 degrees, 19.8 feet. And as we're driving to the windrow, the swing max will swing out to that offset of 20 feet to the right. Uh, if we wanted to bail with the bailer to the left, we would press the left arrow button and it will go 19.8 feet to the left. Uh, if we want the bailer to come back to the center, pressing the center button, we'll target it to zero degrees and it'll um, follow the tractor. As you're bailing, and you can see here we have the offset to the right, the swing max would be swung out to the right the LiDAR sensor has actually picked up the windrow. When it does that, it's going to say enter LiDAR mode with a pop-up and it's going to ask you if you want to enter LiDAR mode. When we select yes, what will happen is down here in the bottom left, you'll see LiDAR control. And over here on the encoder knob, you'll have a green light come up in the middle. That means that the LiDAR sensor is seeing the windrow and it's going to steer according to any changes in the windrow. If for whatever reason, while you're bailing, the LiDAR has brought that axle back to, let's say 20 degrees or 19 degrees, if we press the center button, 
it will override the setting that we have chosen and it will set the current offset. Um, so it's very good practice while you're bailing, while that baler is following that offset windrow, while you maybe into it by a couple hundred feet, just go ahead and press the center button and then it will save that preset instead of where you thought your windows were. Um, what that will prevent from happening is if the windrow disappears, the LiDAR wants to go where that offset is. And if you're bailing at 13 feet, but your offset is set to 20 feet, the LiDAR is gonna to wanna to take the swing max directly out to 20 feet as soon as it loses the windrow. When it stops seeing the windrow, it will automatically go back to auto mode and LiDAR control will disappear. If for whatever reason your baler isn't on top of the windrow in the center, you can change that offset by turning the encoder knob to the right four clicks or to the left four clicks. Now what that will do is the LiDAR thinks the windrow is in the center, but it will actually no notice that the windrow needs to be to the left or the right. So if I turn this to the dial one degree to the left, there's a re red light that comes up and it will actually allow the baler to follow what the LiDAR would think is the left of the windrow, but actually centered on the windrow. And it, for an example is if a tire went on the windrow and flat part of it, the LiDAR would think the center point of the windrow is further to the right than it actually is. And then you can fine tune it here. And the red light here just tells you how much degrees of offset that the LiDAR is gonna put that swing max on the row. A couple more things on the screen. So the fan on off button is just by selecting that button. The fans will turn on, pressing it again, it will go off. And you've seen it highlight green for on. There are work lights on the swing max, pointing back at the rear baler. Pressing that will turn those lights on. Um, you've got a little message center here, your pump load. If we were actively bailing hay, that would be up to, oh, I don't know, 20, 30, 40%, whatever it is. And that just tells you how much load is on the pump of the swing max that's controlling the rear baler. So you can kind of see if you're getting close to maxed out on that baler. This little symbol in the bottom left corner shows the actual angle of the rear axle. So the straighter that the wheels, the more in line it is with the tractor and then steer to the right or the left is where that axle is in real time. Uh, you've got an option menu on the right here. When you press that, it shows what these buttons stand for. Your hydraulic outlets on the swing max up and down. So it tells you port to drop front, port to left front, rear, so on and so forth. By pressing these buttons or pressing this, we will engage those hydraulic outlets and you can lift and lower your baler pickups or swing them. Touching anywhere on the screen will make that go away. When you're in field mode and you're bailing, if you take off across the field and you're not bailing and you're heading to the gate of the field to go on the road, there will be a pop-up that comes up here and asking if you're still bailing. And what that is, is to prevent you from going down the road away when you're in field mode. That is critical information because if you ever do that, LiDAR could pick up on objects such as cars and, and uh, trees and it would steer and it could be catastrophic. So very, very important to know what mode you're in before entering a roadway. Um, to change between modes, ch change mode button, and you select what you want to be in. As soon as you change from field mode to road mode, this pop-up, whether you want to be in manual or auto mode, will come up automatically. As a default, I'll always select auto. Um, the only time you would select manual mode is if you were in a yard somewhere and you're wanting to steer that axle by the encoder knob. Beyond that, auto mode is the preferred setting. What you'll see on the screen when you're in road mode and auto mode you'll see an indicator for the lock pin of the rear axle. What that lock pin is for is to lock that rear axle straight in line with the tractor for when you're tra traveling at road speeds on the highway and it will prevent that steering axle to steer either in the ditch or oncoming traffic. It's a very important safety device and this is the status of that lock pin. Right now we're not actually actively driving so it's showing it's released. That lock pin will engage whenever you're driving and the swing max is going straight. When you slow down to approach a corner, when you start turning with the tractor, it senses the front of the swing max turning and it will release that lock pin and then allow that rear axle to turn. When you get going straight down the road again, it will re-engage automatically.